Welcome back to Rebuild Series. This is episode number 115. So we're back here on Triton. So last episode went ahead and we unloaded the containers at Soar North, took Katie it out, rescued seven people, brought them to the hospital, and then we caught up with Triton. So here we are with Triton. So each time I reload the save, I'm going to have to go back in and set up the autopilot again. And so what I've been working on in some live streams. I'm trying to do more building in the live stream so people can watch and ask questions and I can kind of interact with the community a little bit. And I'm just doing more missions and stuff in the career build series. And so one thing I've been working on that ties in with the new build challenge golf is it is a VTOL that can fit on this helipad on Triton. And so I went ahead and I built mine in a live stream, did some work on stream and off stream. That's pretty good. It's uh, pretty much up to speed now, and so that can be used here in the Career Build Series. And the competition golf is going on as we speak, and so one of the prizes for the winners of that is they're going to have their build featured in a Career Build Series episode. So uh, with the integration of using this pad, I'll be able to land their creations on Triton. So first thing we need to do here is set up the autopilot here. Every time that I reload the save, it uh, essentially nukes where this is going. So what I want to do here is we're going to go to FJ. We're going to fly there in the DID. And we're going to go ahead and we will despawn Triton. And we'll do some work on that, probably in a live stream. And what I'll do is I will also get some fuel going. So we're going to set all that up. I want to move some fuel from the refinery and I want to move it to FJ so that I can load it up on Triton and that way we can move uh, large quantities of fuel. Triton's going to need some fuel. I started at about 108,000 liters. Uh, Triton can hold I think 172,000 liters of fuel so we're a little bit on the short side here. So let's go ahead and we'll zoom out and we'll find a path here safe ahead. So we'll go between these islands here. We'll add a node. And then right here outside the docks, we'll add another node. All right, pretty simple there. The autopilot is on. That will command Triton, and Triton will auto stop when we get there. Good, good, and good. So let's go ahead down. Uh, I think we'll take our dog with us. And, uh, excuse me, sir. And we'll go ahead, and we're going to take Katie up. And we'll go over to FJ, and we'll start to grab some fuel out of the refinery. I probably should have put you in there. Can I put, I think I can put dogs in seats. Yep, dogs go in seats. There we go. Let's go ahead and we'll grab Katie. So if you're participating in the Build Challenge Golf, I have a detached system for the coupler. This coupler is part of the Build Challenge Golf. As you can see, I put an example on there. And so this will auto grab the vehicles. And so the size requirements are there because it has to fit in the pad and it has to stay within the pad diameter. Uh, because, you know, you uh, need to be able to operate on the ship and dock. So that is why it is uh, set up the way it is. So let's go ahead and we'll shut our door. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of gentle back pressure, detach the coupling, and we'll pull off with Katie. There we go. And we'll start to increase the propeller. And we'll head over to FJ. So I don't have the uh, auto hover on. I'm just doing it manually. So we'll go ahead and we'll fly to FJ. And then I think what we'll do is we'll take my new Mac cap, or my, I, I have not branded it as a Mac. It's going to be probably my Pat brand, but uh, it is a cab over that was inspired by a Mac cab over. And so that I built on a live stream. And so we'll go ahead and take that and we'll take the road train and we will uh, go fill up diesel and jet fuel and we'll put it in FJ. And so again, the nice thing with, with, Triton be able to go on autopilot. Triton's going to go all the way up. The point I laid was right here at the end of the docks. So Triton will go there and auto stop and it will just kind of sit and the harbor gens will automatically turn on and produce electricity, whatever we need. And then what we'll do is I will, uh, you know, that'll probably be the end of the episode. We might go do a mission and then we'll end up probably doing is I'll work on that uh, on Triton a little bit in the live stream. And then we'll relaunch it with much fuel. Could also just fill it up with fuel, but I think uh, I want to relaunch it. Some of the systems in Triton aren't working perfectly. For example, the refueling for the parasite craft, that needs to be worked on. So we'll go ahead and we're coming into FJ here, as you can see. 
We'll despawn Katie, grab the truck. So I'm actually going to go, I think I'm going to go to the train hangar. I set up the tankers, the tanker train, uh, the road train, that is, to be able to be spawned together. That just saves me a lot of time from having to couple them together. So if I feel like coupling them, I can. If I don't, I don't have to. Then we'll drive over it. We will grab that fuel, bring it back to the dock here. And then we'll be all set to uh, fill Triton to the maximum. Uh, I didn't really do it uh, when I left the private island, but I uh, had intended to leave about half the diesel from Triton in that base. So Triton's going to be a good way to transport diesel from base to base. Currently, Triton does not have any sort of ability to refuel jet fuel. At some point, I want to add that on there. It's just going to be, you know, a small tank somewhere full of jet fuel uh, so that Triton can have some uh, jet fuel, uh, some craft with jet fuel as their uh, propulsion, as their fuel, and uh, be able to refuel. It, it can refuel diesel at the moment because it has a large store of diesel itself, so it can, um, it can service all the parasite craft. door there we go all right so triton is there let's go ahead and uh, triton, uh, katie is parked up let's go ahead and get katie and we will grab the cab over the road train tankers and then we are good to go i think all right so katie's back and let's go ahead and set this up so here's the mac cab over Unfortunately, when you put it in this train base, you have to readjust it. For example, that's on the ground in the other bases. So, and then we'll launch. We'll spawn all this together. That just saved me a little bit of time getting these together here. A little bit of the, uh, you know, logistics of setting this up is a little bit quicker doing it here. So, go ahead and put that right onto the fifth wheel. All right, we're going to get a fuel warning. We don't have a lot of diesel here presently. That's fine. We have enough to do what we need to do. And we're going to go bring in a bunch of diesel. So we're currently pretty low on money. We're 37477 And so that's pretty low on, on money here right now. And so I need to get a little bit of money going. And so one of the things this will allow me to do is be able to you know, move some of this fuel around, sell it. We can also have some jet fuel that later on when I need to make some money, FJ will be full of uh, even more jet fuel and we can do a big sale. Now the Tritons of the world, you know, one of the good things you need with games is to have a money sink. You need a reason to, to earn money. If, for example, if money had no value, there would be no reason to go earn it, right? And then people wouldn't want to go to work and everything else and it would cause problems. And so by doing it, by having some money sinks in game, it gives you an incentive to go earn that cash. And so one of the big money sinks that I introduce here is Triton. By adding Triton to the game, it's very expensive to run. So I have a new air brake system here. I have to build up air pressure before I can release the brakes, just like you do IRL. Um, in real life, you have, these are two valves. You have a yellow handle valve and a, um, there are two push valves. You have a yellow one and a red one. The yellow one's for the tractor, the red one's for the trailer and it supplies air to release the spring brakes. The spring brakes spring in the on position, and they need air to release them, and so that's called a fail-safe system. So when it fails, it fails safe. So, for example, if you cut an airline, if you had airline leak, you know, you'll often have slow leaks overnight. You're supposed to drain your tanks every day to keep the water out of them, but... Um, you know, if you have if you don't have any air in your tanks, you cannot release the brakes. And as you lose air pressure, it will actually start to uh, they call them dragging the brakes. The brakes will start to come on. So that's how the system works. And then once you're full with air, you actually every time you depress the pedal, you're using air to actuate the brakes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll time lapse you guys out, and I'll see you when we get to the rig.
right, so here we are. We're arriving at the oil platform. So I really do like the oil update. I think it was a good update. I have yet to do any sort of at-sea oil uh, oil work, but uh, that's very involved. And so, for example, you know, you see how long it takes me to build a large ship. And so to build a large ship to go out there and drill, I'm not, you know, I, I find it interesting. It would be cool to do, but I'm not really champing at the bit to do it. So, uh, you know, I'm enjoying these on-land ones. At some point, you know, I could do another one, but I'm really, you know, there's no way I'm using this much fuel. And again, I like to have a little bit of a money constraint. You know, if you have too much money, there's really no impetus to go do things. You know, you don't need to earn the money. You might as well just hang out, you know. And so by having this little bit of a money uh, pressure, it it caused me to want to go do some things. So I'm just going to quickly set a trim here to get the uh, revved up. I'm going to change the game volume just a little, sounds just a little bit because we had Triton on and the props are very, very loud. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we'll grab this. We'll do pump in. We'll fill the front with diesel and we'll fill the rear with jet fuel. The lead will be diesel. The kite will be jet fuel. One of the reasons why I don't fill both of them with, say, for example, diesel. It would be good to fill both with diesel at this point because, you know, Triton needs a lot of fuel. But the issue being this is... The way I designed this, each of those tanks, the the amber one here is diesel. They're color-coded the way they'd be IRL. So, for example, if you were going to put oil in a container, it would be green. If you were going to put diesel in a container, it would be yellow. If you're going to put uh, kerosene in a container, it would be blue. And so they're color-coded. Each of these has a very similar volume to these trailers. And so I can draw most of this into the trailers. I don't have enough to draw, to fill both trailers. I, and then I have two storages of oil so that it always can produce. So, for example, when we leave here, this tank's going to be almost empty. This tank's going to be almost empty. They would have to wait for me to drill all, uh, for me to pump all this oil up to process them. These two oils are full, so these will process themselves into uh, jet fuel and diesel while I'm gone. And then, uh, you know, this will just top them off so works pretty well there so we're gonna wait we get about 14,000 gallons per trailer so you're talking it's almost four times that for liters so uh, pretty big capacity here on these all right so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll let this fill and I will see you guys when it's done all right so welcome back here so we are full we have about 14,000 gallons of jet fuel and diesel in our tanks here so let's go ahead and we'll put all this back and we will take the little drive back to FJ. Hopefully Triton should be should have arrived. This is gonna refill itself. I really do love this oil update. I think it is uh, it was a good major update, you know. I understand it's usually gonna have some people complain about it. Um, but you're not gonna make everybody happy no matter what you try to do. But I think the benefit with this is that it added a lot of logistics. You know, if you think before, I just had to pretty much, you know, just buy fuel at the bases, you know. And so that was pretty boring, in my opinion. I think this is much more engaging. It gives you something to do. I understand some people just don't like to do that type of gameplay. That's fine. You can always turn on infinite fuel if you want. You can still buy fuel. That's just one thing some people will complain about. This is like, dude, you can still go buy fuel, go to the refinery island, buy it there, you know, tanker it. That's part of the game, you know, and... uh that's part of the gameplay, and so I really enjoy it. It, For example, that's the reason I came down to FJ is, you know, Triton is, I can actually see Triton. You can see Triton right there where uh, the autopilot was set up to uh, leave her. And Triton uses a good bit of fuel. Triton is a money sink. Again, we need that money sinking game to give us a reason to go do these jobs. We're essentially doing jobs. It's a job simulator. And so we need to do these jobs because we have a lot of money that we need to get in order to do things like service Triton and uh, continue on. So, you know, moving quite a bit of fuel here. The nice thing with spawning this at the train hangar is I'm going to be able to just uh, despawn all of this. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring Triton in. I'm trying to decide if I want to bring Triton in yet. I might not. Um, let's bring Triton in. And we will take the diesel out. Uh, I'm going to despawn it and respawn it. And that way I can bring the the fuel with me. 
and then I think what we'll do is we'll head off toward the the new island that we bought, the uh, custom island. Uh, we've yet to start building there. That's on my agenda as well. But we need money. We're like I said, showed you, we're down to about thirty-seven thousand dollars. So this is going to help us here, having a little bit of fuel. Uh, we'll do some money runs. We'll do things like take Albatross up to the military base with jet fuel from here, and uh, we can go ahead and make some money. So these little jobs give us things to do in game, and I think that's great. Um, you know, as much as the devs got flack for these animals too, I am really enjoying seeing the bison out here. You know, the bison add a little bit of uh, depth to the arid biome. The arid biome's pretty, it's pretty desert, which is what a desert is. You know, it's pretty vacant and uh, void, and that's what a desert is. You know, it's pretty vacant void. And so you could have things like scrub brush, but that would reduce performance. And so by having some of these things like bison, I saw uh, a hare, a rabbit earlier. Uh, I've seen foxes and badgers. You know, last episode we saw that fox swimming. And so that is really, um, it adds a little bit of depth to the to the game, I think. And uh, I would assume the devs have some further plans for animals that we do not know. You know, they were working covertly on space for a long time. They said for years. So plural, multiple years, that makes sense. And so, you know, when they put out all these animals and people assume that they have no plan or that it's kind of silly, you don't know yet. You, you might still think that it's that way once they're done with their plan, but they do have a long-term plan. So there's Triton at the end there. We'll put this away, bring Triton in, fuel up, and then we'll take out the new VTOL and try to get a mission. So here we go. Let's go ahead. Oh, I'm standing up, and I went into third person. So there's El Doggeroni. Let's grab the El... I can't do it while I'm in the seat. Let's grab El Doggeroni here. We will drop this... We'll keep this dog with us. I do like the dogs. I think the panting is a little bit excessive, so. All right, uh, we already pulled it in, so we should have the fuel now. Let's go ahead and check it. As you can see there, we have 55,000 uh, liters of diesel, so we're good on that. We have 80,000 liters of jet, so we're going to come in with Triton, and we will uh, go ahead. Let's actually, uh, let me spawn this VTOL right now. And we'll go out there and land on Triton. A little bit weird in this base that I have to drop everything down, but that's just the way it, the way it is. Why can't I pick you up? There we go. All right. So this is the uh, chickadee. So I've named this the chickadee. So i pretty get much given a lot of my stuff animal names now. So I, I hand drew that. So that's a chickadee. And so it's uh, kind of a small bird, like a chickadee is, and so that's why I uh, made it like this. So let's go ahead and stick the doge in there. So still have some stuff I'm working on here. I had, uh, I was retuning the propellers. I did work on some p-values. Built this in a live stream. If you're interested in watching that, you can go ahead and check out the live streams for that. They are recorded. You can check them on the YouTube for that. Uh, also, uh, I'd love to have more people join me in the live streams. Uh, have a good crowd that uh, joins us in the live stream, so that's always fun. So we're going to go ahead and taxi out here. Stick on the AP. Now we'll go ahead and climb out and head to Triton. So here we are, airborne. As you can see, there's Triton, right where we left her. And so this is actually, this is not necessarily the first time I've landed. This will be the first time on the career build series I've landed on Triton with this craft. But I've uh, been doing a lot of work on this craft lately. So I'm going to tip the rotors all the way up again. This is what the kind of uh, the basis for the Build Challenge Golf was all about. You know, I like to do a test before. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be sharing my tests anymore because people keep jumping the gun on the uh, challenges. So, you know, I, I try to, I kind of have a, you know, I try to test out what I want the challenge to be to make sure it's possible, make sure the rule is going to work. And I used to do that in secret and then... You know, I would uh, start the challenge, and I started doing it on stream so people could see it, and the issue was people would start early, which is not fair to their fellow competitors. So can't do that anymore. I had twice here where people have started early. So I'm just going to kind of uh, do my testing in secret, and then I will uh, reveal the challenge. So go ahead, and we'll land on Triton here. 
Still have to work on the mast. There's a bunch that Triton needs, so that's probably going to be some of the fodder for the live stream. I'll probably end up doing it tomorrow when the uh, when the uh, update releases. So I do have a camera on here, so let's go to the camera. So there is the underslung camera. Let's actually do this. What's my altitude? 221 is my heading, so 221. So autopilot's all set in here. And then altitude hold for now, let's just do uh, 50. I have to fix that quickly because I just set the altitude to zero, which is dangerous. And um, let's go ahead and I can open this hatch. Why am I stuck here? I need a duck. I'm on the, stuck on this light. The light has the, oh, see, I'm, I'm touching that light. So I have to fix that. That light, the collision is uh, gonna get me stuck and cause some physical problems. So it's the same type of harness system as Katie did. It actually was pulled directly out of Katie did. So that's familiar. All right. So we the autopilot again is a tool to help you. It's not. Its job is not to do the work for you. And so it's workload reduction. And so we're gonna go ahead and set that up like this. And then altitude holds coming off, so I can manually control it. And we're gonna start working our way into the pad. And we're gonna put the bullseye in the center of this camera. The camera is right between the locking lugs, and so we just need to put that bullseye right in the center here. And so we're slowly descending down, keeping an eye on the helipad here, so we're going to go straight in, and then we'll transition to the camera when we get close. So pretty much kind of same uh, docking as Katie did. Less likely to hit the propeller as Katie did because the props are on the side and they uh, will not hit. So this is why there are size constraints on the Challenge Golf. You know, a lot of people have been uh, not reading the rules in Challenge Golf and having issues with the size because they're not reading the rules. So you need to read the rules. And the reason is it needs to fit on this pad so that I can put the winner builds into the career build series. So f the, for the people who win the uh, Challenge Golf, I will feature their build on an episode of the career build series. So we're right over the pad now. As I get right over it, it should light up so I can see the bullseye here. And so I need to move a little bit forward here. So this is still very much work progress. It's working pretty well. It's just the the down collective is not um, really as robust as it needs to be. There we go. So see it lit up as soon as I went over the pad. There we go. So I'm going to kind of look outside, too. I'm going to split my attention outside, inside. There we go. And I need to rotate it a little bit, and we're attached. So as you can see, it will, um, because the rotor is still trying to lift me up, it will auto-grab those. So what we can do is just go ahead and we'll shut our engine down. And that will settle. So beautiful. So this is now on there. We have our doge here. Excellent. So I've just put a little bit of different paint color on my doors. So let's make sure, so as you can see, it's very tight. These nacelles had to go down one. I had to redo the nacelles a little bit. So it's very tight on the nacelles. I may want to fix that a little bit, but uh, it works well. So as you can see, it's um, it's pretty tight, pretty tight on here. So you have to, uh, have to keep that in mind. So, uh, all right, so let's go ahead and we will uh, bring Triton in. So I'll bring this doge with me here. So let's go ahead and we'll go down the ladder here. We'll get Triton docked. And uh, I think we'll, we need to put this cargo, this container handler on dock. And then we will um, try to decide. I might, you know what? Yeah, let's try to think if I'm going to despawn or not. Probably will to be able to uh, fill up Triton. It's going to be a lot easier to fill up Triton if I despawn, so. All right, so we need to go for one of these dock spots. So we'll just go to the closer one there. And I do not know if I have a fuel gauge in here. So Triton's going to get worked on a bunch when I get it to the uh, the live streams. I think that's going to be the best way to do it is do some work on Triton and live streams. And so we'll get some things fixed. It's not too bad. We're missing some electric connections on the 
light mast, I have to put in a bunch of that engineering panel there. So, for example, I don't have any idea how much fuel I have on there. I had about 108,000 liters, I think I put in there. I pretty much took everything from FJ, about 108,000 liters. And uh, so we're going to grab some more fuel here. Let's see, where is the dock? Right there. Okay. We'll start steering in. So especially with a large ship like this, you really need to plan your movements early. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coming down on port. So we're going to desync thrust to port. That lets me control my screws independently. And so I'm going to start coming up on starboard. And I've reduced my port to zero. And I'm going to actually take my rudder and go like this to starboard. And if we look at the relative motion here, it's going to kind of keep us angled this direction. You know, we're... Normally, it would start. It will start to twist the boat towards the port side, but with that little bit of rudder, it's keeping the it's keeping the uh, stern uh, currently in line. And so we're going to change up in a second here, and that's kind of why I have it this way. All right, so we're good now. As you can see, kind of the angle. We're coming around, as you can see. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing up port and start dumping down starboard. And at the same time, I'm going to actually bring my rudder around. So bring up port. We'll bring down starboard. Like so. All right. And we'll actually give it a little bit of rudder over to port like so. And the uh, reason we're doing this, as you can see, now we're going kind of diagonally. So we're going to start to control that with a rudder. So as you can see, we're going at a diagonal. And so now I'm kicking the stern out with full port. Now what I want to do is we don't need full thrust, so we're going to start to cut back on thrust. That will just slow us down a little bit. And we're still hard over to port at a 45-degree angle. And so it's pushing us up against this dock and turning the uh, stern. So we're going to start to kick out the bow with some bow thruster to port. And we'll start to cut down some thrust here. And we're about ready to zero it. Now IRL, you'd have a lot of momentum. We'd probably have to put it in reverse to get it stopped. But as you can see with the game here, we're good. And we'll just come in. I need to, as usual, I'm going to shut off vehicle damage as I dock because it is unrealistic for those fenders not to do anything. So we're going to go ahead. We'll pivot off the stern here. And we're just going to dock up. All right, so stern thruster can stop. Bow thruster is good. All right, we're going to go ahead, and I need to unload the container mover off the crane. I need to then grab the dog. I need to... I don't know if I can fill this. Let's see. It's going to take a long time to fill. Yeah, that pumps out. So I, I have no way to fill this ship uh, without despawn. So I'm going to have to despawn. Not the end of the world. I'll take the VTOL off and I will take this off. And then we'll be good to go. So let's grab the ladder. And I need to take the dog off. And then... Uh, that will be make it so I can put all this fuel in. So I still have that bow thruster going. I can hear it now. It's still running. And there is the harbor generator starting. I'm using up enough electricity that it will auto start the harbor gens. So I'm digging on that VTOL. It is very fast. We'll get into a mission with it, but um, it's nice and fast. It's uh, very, it's reasonably efficient. It's not ultra efficient, but um, especially if you bring the thrust back, uh, it's pretty efficient. So. All right, so we're going to leave this up just a little bit, and I'm going to just no clip up there. Again, this is like me changing characters, so you imagine you have somebody on the dock. You'd have This ship would have many people, and uh, so you wouldn't just have one dude operating the whole ship. And so that's kind of what I do when I am no clipping around here with this type of big operation is I'm changing characters, you know. You'd have somebody up there. I'd be on the radio. I'd tell them, hey, you know, disconnect the, uh, the handler. Uh, you know, IRL, I wouldn't need to despawn the ship, of course, to do this, so.
It's already kind of an unrealistic situation of of uh, despawning the ship to fill it. But I do need to add the ability to fill this and take a little while to put 100, you know, to fill the tanks on this. Probably, we're probably, I don't know, maybe 70, 80,000 liters low right now. And then the water ballast needs time to to reconfigure. All right, so we'll grab the dog and we will take the VTOL. We'll actually uh, take the VTOL off and uh, just land it somewhere over there on the dock. And then we can, uh, I think what we'll do is go do a mission. And then I'll work on, I'll work on the on Triton in a live stream. We'll I'll update some of the things that it needs. There we go. Let's grab our border collie here. And we'll go ahead. I'm still pumping on that uh, bow thruster. That's another reason to leave damage off when we're docked here. Is if I left that bow thruster on IRL, it probably wouldn't do it really any damage. It might cause some scraping damage, but it's not going to do any major damage. In game, it will. Will eventually explode, you know. So it's kind of a kind of a way to make the game a little bit more realistic by turning on some of these options. So that's why I run creative all the time. You know, even if I wasn't recording, I'd have it on as it allows me to have a more... Oh, I do not have a detached system for this variant. That's not good. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go uh, 50 foot on that. Heading is good. Altitude set. So the issue with this is I need a detached system. I forgot to connect it. So there's no way for me to detach from Triton. So the autopilot is on, so I'm going to no clip up to it. So that's me forgetting something again. There we go. Okay, so that will go up on its own. I just need to put a detached system on there. And so by doing it this way, hopefully I can get in here without causing ruckus. All right, there we go. So not too bad there. So I need to add that. So, you know, the best way to test your builds is to put them in a career game. And that's going to kind of get you set up for knowing what your build actually needs. And so... You know, this is you know, right off the bat there, found. I thought this thing was all set to go, and there are some issues that it needs, so. So we'll go ahead and land right here. All right, we'll shut the engine down. Come on, get out of you. Get out of you. All right, and we will despawn Triton. All right, so Triton's despawned, and this should put a bunch of cash, and we can actually see how much fuel was left in Triton. So we're at 55. We're now up to 115. So All right, so I went ahead and respawned the the chickadee here, and I'm just going to take uh, that. So I, we are now going to go ahead and we'll do this rescue here. Had to fix a couple things on this before we get going. Again, this is the, the testing phase for this aircraft, so we'll go ahead and uh, treat as such. So I had a trim in here. I have to fix that or else it won't work. All right, so we have a rescue mission. It is out here, as you can see, right there, just by Ender Airfield. So we're going to go ahead and we'll do that. So we'll start bringing the rotors up. I can do it with the three key as well. Start to thrust up here. All right, there we go. We are vertical. Or we, yep, we're in the air. Start lowering these down. Start to increase the thrust. There we go. Turn on the AP Master is just essentially the auto hover feature. There we go. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna enter in the Ender. We'll set uh, an altitude of 2,000 feet. 200. Not 20,000. We'll go 2,000. Uh, altitude hold, now GPS. Alright, so we can hit about 300 knots with this aircraft. Uh, not that we're going to stay there. I want to run much more efficient efficient uh, prop setting, but we can hit about 300 knots. I went 302, I think, is the max speed for this. So it's nice and fast, but we're going to burn through fuel really fast doing that. So uh, if I bring my props all the way back, I have a constant speed propeller system in here. It will allow me to, um, you know, operate much more economically, and I won't have to worry about temperature because in real life you will over temp your engines if you run them at full throttle all the time. That's not something you do IRL is run your engines at full throttle. 
I think some people think you always do that. You do not, not in a powerful aircraft. You, you can do it in like small aircraft because the red line is not really where the red line is. So that, you know, new people to fly and don't ruin the airplanes. But uh, we'll be there in 2.3 minutes. So we're, our, our uh, max efficiency cruise, there's a bunch of, when you have a constant speed propeller system, you have low pitch, high RPM for takeoff and landing. So your engines are going to be screaming and they're not very efficient and they're not producing much thrust because the blade pitch is very little, but it allows you to quickly make changes, which is what will save you if you're going to, for example, stall close to the ground. So you need that. And then as you start to increase the propeller pitch, you're going to get to what's known as your max speed. So max speed is the propeller setting and the engine setting in order to give you your best speed. And then you have uh, your best efficiency, and that's going to be the speed or uh, max endurance. There's a bunch of terms for it. Um, it's either max endurance or uh, max efficiency. And so the that prop setting tends to be your high, you know, one of your higher prop pitches. You're losing a lot of RPM. You're putting load in the engine, which reduces the RPM. You're taking a bigger bite out of the air, and so you may go. You're going to go slower, but you're going to be. Um, you're going to lose like say 30% of your speed to gain 70% of uh, fuel efficiency. So it's uh, worth doing that. So going here, you know, our temps are under control. Our RPMs are down under 500 RPM. And we're uh, sipping fuel pretty well there. As you can see, that's uh, it, it drains unevenly. I don't, I don't have the space to really fix that with valves, but um, so the valves are oversized in game. But as you can see here, we're um, sipping fuel pretty well. And it's diesel, it's cheap anyway. So we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna start increasing the prop, and at the same time, I'm going to bring the thrust back. So you notice our speed is increasing, even though I'm bringing the thrust back, and that's because I'm adding prop. And so that um, it's unladening the engine as I'm doing it. All right, so we're going to start to tilt these rotors up. I'm going to go ahead and take off these systems here and just leave that um, hover on. And that's just going to keep me stabilized. So my rotors are at vertical or near vertical at the moment. All right, good. And I'm just going to go ahead, and what we'll do is we'll actually go nav GPS, and I'm going to set a heading. So let's go 160 is fine. We'll do it all with the autopilot. We'll kind of show you that. So here we go. So I have heading hold on, and I have nav GPS. This is doing the station keeping there. So it's trying to station keep over there. We're a little bit, we're too far to be really doing station keeping here. And part of the issue is, as you can see, it's off to my side. So what we should do is we should change this heading to 257. 257. Because it's still, the vehicle still wants to uh, perform, you know, forward uh, more than it does sideways. So we're trying to side strafe. And it's better to pitch it like this. So once we get aimed at that, it will, uh, it will smooth out a little bit. And so I'm just going to drop the rotors just a little bit to get down to that. And then altitude hold, let's go down to, oh, I don't know, 500 feet to start with. And that will uh, start to bring us down. So we can do it all with the autopilot if we want, but, you know, I'd like to do a lot of hand flying. So we'll go ahead and I don't really need the bearing on that screen anymore. Let's go ahead and as you can see, we have our camera underneath. And so we should be getting, as you can see, we're uh, moving towards it. It's right there to our right. And so the station keeping is going to keep us on that point here in a second. All right, we'll start going back vertical with the rotors. And as you can see, it's starting to, yaw, or starting to roll us to the right to get us over that point. So what's our altitude here? Looking all right. 500 might be pretty good. We'll see. There we go. 500 is pretty good. All right. So as you can see, it's going to automatically take us over the point. Beautiful. And let's go ahead and we'll enter in something lower. 350. I could take over at any point, but we'll just run the autopilot again. This is the testing phase for me. I need to do some testing anyway, so this is a good time to test all the systems out. See how they work in real world scenarios. This is why they go give it to a test pilot, you know. They need to test it out in real world scenarios. Alright, one thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and turn on vehicle damage again. Alright, so I'm going to take the autopilot off. And I'm... Oh, oh, I should be in uh, first person. Alright, there we go. And let's go ahead and set the brake. 
Oh, I'm take I took off. Okay, let's go ahead and I need to find a better place to land here. I landed right in the slope. It's kind of hard to see the terrain a little bit, so let's go tick these modes off and I'll go AP back on. It'll just give me a little bit of stability help here as I get used to flying this. Each vehicle is different, so. Alright, so right here looks pretty flat. I don't have any indicator if my parking brake is on, so I kind of have to see if the wheels are rolling, and I need to set that parking brake. So we'll go ahead and we'll land right here. And I can then set the park brake. So, see, I thought we were in the ground. We still weren't even on the ground yet. All right, so go ahead. I'm just going to put a little bit of Y trim down there. That, that was the issue I had before was with that. All right, so the fuel valve is off, so that will shut the engine off. Just take a second for it to spool down. Let's check the wheels really quick. Okay, brake's true. We're good here. So let's go ahead and we'll grab a fire X. And we'll go ahead and we'll take care of this. All right, so let's put out the tent. I don't know how they set the tent on fire and the truck at the same time. Unless the truck spread to the tent. All right, I, did I put a defib in there? I think I did. Okay, fire is extinguished. Okay, looks like three jabronis. We'll check in a second here. Why don't you follow along? As you can see, the um, my, my tail number lights up there. Right, you, excuse me there, sir. You, you can go back between their legs there, and then I want the defib, and then you go back. Okay, good. We'll defib this person. I have a little bit of uh, med kit left here. And that will be good to go. Clear. All right. This guy's a pirate. R. Are you a pirate, sir? All right. So I think we'll go run this off to the hospital, and then we'll probably call it an episode there. So got some good stuff done. Moving along here. Uh, some good trite work. All right. Let's uh, fire up. All right, we'll check, make sure that our RPM is stabilized. I want to go in here. I need to get rid of this trim. Okay, there we go. All right, so rising up here. We'll go ahead. We'll set an altitude of 2,000. Set that in. I need to, uh, that way I can kind of go over here and figure out what we want to do for, we'll go up here, St. Alexander, I think. All right, we'll set that in, St. Alexander. All right, we'll start moving forward. So I'm going to pitch the, I can also do it with the four key. We'll do the four key, start to go forward. All right. Now keep going forward. Now that we are up above 90 knots, it's, uh, I think it's 70 knots what I have it set at. It will uh, now behave itself. Um, you know, what you need is you need enough airflow over the wings that the wings can take over and the control surfaces have enough airflow in game to work. So it's usually around 60 knots. Depending upon, like, if you have good flaps, for example, I can get the Antonov 2 down to, like, 30 knots like it would be in real life. But um, this plane's around uh, 60 knots it needs to get to before it can uh, transition into forward mode. So I'm happy with how this turned out. Turned out pretty well here. And this is going to be a nice tool in the toolbox. This thing is super fast, man. It goes 300 knots. You know, you can't go 300 knots sustained because you would eventually overheat and you'd burn through your fuel pretty quick. We've used about uh, 50 gallons, something like that. So, um, you know, what's that? Three times that. So we're talking 150 liters. So about 150 bucks. We're getting two grand per person, plus we just got three grand for the fire. So even if we used all of our fuel on this mission, we would have no uh, money constraint problems. So I'm going to go ahead and take nav GPS and al altitude hold off. I'm going to start to reduce my thrust. I never even bothered to bring the uh, prop back. So we're just going to reduce the thrust. And there's St. Alexander there. So aiming right for the helipad, I'm going to start to use the three key and bring my uh, rotors up. I do have a gauge I'm going to add in there so I can see it. But we'll start putting those up and start thrusting down. There we go. 
as you can see, it's starting to um, angle those so we can do vertical flight. Oh, pressing the wrong key, pressing the wrong key. There we go. There we go. So the auto hover is going to is picking the nose up like that. Uh, that's fine. It just wants to cancel out your movement. That's all the auto hover is doing is it's a smoother. It's trying to cancel everything out. It's, it's as though you had a PID and you had a zero in the PID, essentially, as your set point. So we'll go ahead and we will uh, use the camera and we'll just come down a little bit high here. I should have had a better approach, but um, I need to work on this where my down collective is not enough. I, this is actually a very high VSI. That's a very high uh, descent rate. You would feel very nauseous going down at this rate. It would Your stomach would feel like it was floating the whole time, and your ears would be popping like crazy because it's an unpressurized craft. So this is a very unrealistic speed we're going here uh, down. So, you know, it seems like it's slow in game, but you need to understand that is a game. That's the game, you know. IRL, that would be insanely fast. You would not be comfortable uh, we had to do some flights in the airlines with uh, where our pressurization system was broken, and you're limited to 10,000 feet because if you're 10,000 feet or below, you don't need supplemental oxygen. Uh, you can go up to 15,000 for 30 minutes, but you can go to 10,000 indefinitely. So we flew around the Midwest a couple times without pressurized airplane. The problem is, in a pressurized airplane, I can descend as fast as I want. Up, oh, that's the oil platform. I thought that was like I thought San Alexander was right under us. It, it is. That's the oil platform. And so uh, as you're descending, the air pressure is changing. That's actually how your altimeter works, is uh, air pressure changes. And so your ears will pop the entire time. And so like people say, oh, my ears pop in an airliner. They do pop, but they would be popping much, much worse if you're in an unpressurized airplane. So like I said, I've had to do some flights in an unpressurized uh, jet before. And so we're limited to 10,000, and we want to descend very slowly. We don't want to send more than 1,000 feet per minute because you would uh, be blowing people's eardrums out, literally. And I've had issues where I was flying, and I had an air, air pocket in one of my teeth. And as we were depressurizing the airplane, as we were coming down, once you get uh, start getting down to a low altitude, it starts to, uh, you know, you don't need that pressurization. It starts to depressurize. And uh, it was causing the air bubble to expand in my tooth. And I had to have the other pilot uh, take over because it was uh, very uncomfortable. So here we are. Let's go ahead and we'll put it down so I can look down here and use the camera as necessary. Or I can use my peripherals that I've showed you before. You just kind of use peripheral vision and kind of line up on it. But, you know, it seems like it's low, the amount of um, sync rate I can put in there. But like I said, that is an extreme sync rate. So it's kind of, kind of for the best that it's not that fast because that would be a great way to damage the aircraft. So I'm just going to trim just a little in until I can hit my fuel valve, and then I need to remember to cancel that out. There we go. All right, so that's shutting down. We'll leave the power on. I think we're good for electricity. Let me just quickly check how we're looking here. We do it. Uh, my electrical gauge isn't connected right now, so that's good. We were, we were producing enough electricity until I shut the engine down, and then we started losing, so we're good on that. So we'll feed this guy another uh, med kit here. The more you get them healed up, the uh, more money you're going to get from for them. So grab a health kit and pump a couple into this dude here. All right, good. You follow me. You follow me. And if you could follow me, we'll go ahead and we will get the heck out of here. So I think this was a fun episode. It was good to, uh, good to get the chickadee out. I'm uh, pleased with the chickadee. I think it came out well. It's very fast. 300 knots is pretty good. And... Um, you know, 220 at max efficiency. Like Katie did, for example, do like 143. Uh, Katie is pretty efficient. Uh, does 143. Uh, what does I think Night Owl? Night Owl is expensive because it's twin turbine, and so jet fuel is expensive, and it burns a lot of jet fuel. That will go up to like 260, and so this thing screams for being a very inexpensive craft and so this will be a fun craft to use on Triton and I also you know I want to get more new craft out for the uh, new career build series here you know th some of the stuff I used in the old career build series I don't want to necessarily default to so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next one